In this video, we're going to have a look at creating a stylized knitting pattern that is fully adaptable here in Photoshop. So I'm going to start with a new document. I'm going to choose File and New. I'm going to make a document about 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels in size. This is not set in concrete at all. I'm going to the Ellipse tool. So I'm going to target this Ellipse Shape tool. I'm going to make sure it is set to Shape and it has a fill and no stroke at all. I'm going to click once in my document and I'm going to make an ellipse that is 200 pixels wide and 400 pixels tall and just click OK. The next thing is we're going to locate the anchor point at the top of this ellipse. So I'm just selecting over it with the direct selection tool, this white arrow tool. So it's selected, none of the other anchor points are selected. Here underneath the pen tool, I'm going to the convert point tool. I'm going to click on that anchor point once and that just makes it pointy. At the same time, I'm going to click on this bottom one and make it pointy too. This is going to be the basic knitting shape, the shape of one part of a stitch. We're going to rotate it. So with it selected, choose edit and then free transform path. And up here in the transform panel, you're just going to select the angle and just make sure it's set to 30 degrees. You will want to make sure that your shape is rotating from the center. So if you've got something other than the middle of these nine boxes selected, then you will want to change that before you change the angle. Click the check mark. Over here in the layers palette, we're going to make a duplicate of this layer. So I'm just going to click to make a duplicate with this duplicate layer selected. I'm choosing edit and then transform path and I'm flipping horizontal. I'm going to move this element across and I'm adding the shift key as I move it because I want it to move in a perfectly horizontal direction. I'm going to zoom in here so we can see where we're working. We want these two shapes to be independent of each other. So I don't want them touching because that's going to mess up a situation that we're going to have down the line, which is going to prohibit, if you have them touching, prohibit you from being able to make these stitches different colors. So I'm going to select these two, right click and choose duplicate layers. And that makes a second copy, which is currently selected. I'm going to target the move tool and I'm going to start moving using a down pointing arrow and then I can add the shift key. And I'm just going to move these into position. Again, I don't want them touching the stitch above, but I do want them to be pretty close. I want to eyeball this so that this space here is pretty much the same space as I've got here. And I'm going to do this one more time. So I'm going to the Path Selection tool. I'm going to select over these two objects here. You can see that I have the Path Selection tool set to all layers so that I can just drag over whatever it is that I want to select. This time I'm going to copy it by holding down the Alt or Option key and just dragging these shapes up. Again, I'm adding the Shift key before I let go of everything to make sure it goes in a perfectly vertical direction. Just going to adjust the positioning of these two shapes. So again, this space here is equal to this space here. We're going to select over everything now and again, Alt drag and just position a second copy of these objects over to the right. Again, making sure that I add the shift key so that they're traveling in a perfectly horizontal direction. Here, I want to again match this sort of spacing here to this spacing here. Everything's still selected, so I'm just going to nudge it into position. This is more than we need for our pattern, so I'm just going to bring everything sort of centrally into the document so that we can have a look at it. To get a pattern, we need to find out where our repeat is. So if I'm looking at this point here as being one corner of the repeat. I'm looking over here the next time I run into it, which is over here. And then if I go down, the next time I see it is here and across here, it's here. So this is the size of my repeat. To mark it out, to make it just easier to do it because you can edit it, I'm going to the rectangle tool. I have that set to shape as well. I have a fill on it and no stroke at all. I'm just going to drag out 
approximately where my pattern element is. Now this is not perfect and the reason why we used a shape for this is because it's not perfect and it's going to be easy for us to edit. I'm dropping down the opacity of this shape so I can see all the pattern elements underneath. And I'm just going to make sure that this shape is positioned in the exact correct position. So I'm going to make sure that it is immediately below the bottom corner of this pointy bit here and over here I want it to be in the exact same position. I think that looks pretty good. Here it's in this position I've got the pointy element here and the shape just to its right. Here I've got the pointy element here and the shape just to its right. I'm thinking that's going to be pretty good. I'll control click on the rectangle here to make that a selection and hide that pink layer because I don't want that to be part of my pattern. I'll choose edit and then define pattern and click OK. To test this and you will want to test this before you go any further because if it needs any alteration you need to do that now and not discard your document for any reason because otherwise you'll have to recreate it. And coming back down here, selecting my pattern piece and click OK. And I'm going to zoom in because it's going to be really obvious very quickly if I've got a problem. I do have a slight problem here. I think I'm out by one pixel. So let's come back into this document. I'm going to deselect my selection. I'm going to reselect my rectangle here and I think I need to reposition my rectangle. I think it might be better positioned. I'm just going to hold the shift key to move it across in a perfectly horizontal direction. I think I might avoid some of these problems if I don't have it actually touching the side of this shape. Let me just bring it in a small amount here. If you are finding that the snap is causing problems, you can turn snap off for a minute. Let's try that. Control click on the box, turn it off and then make a pattern out of this. Make a note if you're not naming your patterns as to what number the pattern is because you will want to go back and remove the one that didn't work. So I'm going to remove 53 because it did not work. I'm going to delete it and then I'm going to go and select pattern 54 because that was the one I just created. And now I'm looking at it and it's perfect. There's no problems with this pattern at all. I cannot see any fractures or anything that's not perfectly smooth in that. So just a word of warning there, you might get better mileage if you make sure that your rectangle is well away from any of these shapes. Just might make it a little bit easier to select your repeat. So now that we've got our pattern repeat, I'm actually going back to my main document. Again, another reason why I don't want to discard it. I'm going to turn off my pink layer. I'm also going to turn off my background layer. So now this is transparent and I'm going to save that again because this would be a transparent pattern. Let's go back into this document. I'm going to turn off the background because that does have a fill in it. Double click here and go and pick up the transparent version of this pattern. At this point, I like to fill this with a darker color. So I'm going to layer, new fill layer, and then I'm going to solid color. This is the color of the original pattern. So I'm going to a darker version of it. Just looks kind of cool inside this document. Of course, we can double click on the pattern and change its size. So I've dropped it down to 50%. You want to probably look at it at 100% first so that you just make sure it's functioning before you start making it really, really small. Now, if I wanted to, to color this, what I would do is go ahead, right click and rasterize this layer. So now this is a raster layer. It's not actually a pattern fill layer any longer. And of course, the reason why we kept all these shapes separate from each other was so that we could actually fill them with a color. So I'm going to choose a sort of blue color and if I just use the paint bucket tool I can actually add a new layer for this. If I set this to all layers and contiguous and anti-alias and put a tolerance here of about 10 
I should be able to use the paint bucket tool to just click over a shape and fill it with the color. So I'm making colored stitches here by just clicking on the shapes that I want to make a certain color. So it's possible, of course, to then go ahead and make this pattern, for example, in reds and whites and make a sort of Christmas pattern. You could make shapes or designs in your knitted fabric. Of course, if you want your starting pattern to be a different color, you could do that. If I select over this ellipse, it's still a shape here. So I'm just going to target one of the shape tools and I can change the fill on this shape. So I could, for example, make a black pattern. So I'm going through this and just changing every one of these pattern elements to black not changing where that rectangle is because that rectangle is going to be key to getting my pattern element out. So I haven't moved my rectangle, my selection's still in place. I'm just going to choose edit and define pattern and this time I have a black and white pattern. In this case, I'm going to just turn off these layers and do layer, new fill layer and pattern. Click OK and go and find our new black pattern. Of course, this is a transparent one. That's why we're seeing the green color below. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.